Hello everyone, it's your boy, Travis Bernard Douglas, and I am a breast cancer survivor. So just to give you a backstory, last year of August, I discovered a lump in my right breast while I was taking a shower. I immediately checked the left and there was nothing there. So I knew that something abnormal was going on, but it didn't come to my mind, breast cancer. It was not sore and it did not secrete. But however, as I said before, I did not think it was breast cancer. I thought I might have bumped it or something like that. Needless to say, I had a doctor's appointment coming up. And uh, my first doctor visit, I forgot to tell my doctor because it was my, my yearly. And typically, I'm going in and we're catching up. We're asking our children doing and family. And I completely forgot. It wasn't until about four weeks later, me and my partner was laughing. He nudged me and... That's when I realized I had forgot to talk to my doctor about the lump in my right breast. So needless to say, I had to set another appointment. And I think by then, um, by the time I could get in, it was going to be a, be like November, uh, probably the middle part or the latter part of November. Um, I was able to get into the doctor and then they end up referring me over to Prisma Health for a um sonogram and a um, mammogram. And so I uh, went to that doctor visit and I was kind of shocked because I've always heard my mom talk about getting mammograms and other women. So I did not understand how they was going to get my chest onto that machine. But hey, well, there's a will, there's a way. They figured it out and, you know, they were able to get, you know, images of uh, my chest. However, the doctor came in and he ended up doing another sonogram and he did the um, the filling test where he felt and pressed to see uh, what I had going on. Um, he told me immediately, he said, Travis, um, I am almost certain that you have breast cancer. Um, that was a shock. That was very shocking to hear. Um, I was stoic when he told it to me, but in my mind, it was like a shotgun went off. And... Um, so I didn't really know how to process it, but in the back of my mind, I was still thinking, ah, oh, can't be, you know, you know, I know he know what he's talking about more than likely, but some doctors have been known to be wrong. And so um, it, it, it can't be that. Um, I don't have anyone in my family that has ever had breast cancer that I knew of. Um, so it just, it just can't be that. Uh, needless to say, I um, had a Another appointment that was scheduled for me to go back to the doctor's office and get a um, biopsy done. Now, a biopsy is when they, you know, cut a little incision and get a couple of specimens from the area that has the complications. And they'll send it off to the lab, test it, and then they'll call you back with your results. But however, they call me back, back with my results and they confirmed that I had breast cancer. Now, the next step for me was to go and get a genetics test. So I went to do the genetics testing. Of course, they asked you a series of questions like your family tree, you know, what kind of cancers on your dad's side and what kind of cancers on your mom's side. Um, you know, do you got sisters? Do you got brothers? Um, and you go in and you give some blood and They'll give you the test results back in, um, I think it was like a week. And my test had came back negative, thank God. So, you know, that lessens the risk for my parents uh, to, my parents and my brother to uh, carry that BRCA1, BRCA2 genetics. So it's not a genetic thing in our family. It's just something that happened to me. So needless to say, um, um, that was a breath of fresh air. And next, I had to have an appointment with my surgeon. And so um, my surgeon, uh, which is Dr. Mira, he um, had me come in. He discussed with me um, what the procedure would be like. Um, you know, the downtime, of course, I'm a hairstylist and an independent contractor and a salon owner. So um, it blew my mind when they told me I would be home for about six to eight weeks. And I was like, oh, my God, if I don't work, I don't get paid. What in the world? What's going to happen? But however, you know, I, I fear not, you know, I, you know, once again, I am one of those people that I do believe that God has everything in his hand and he knows what's best for me, even when I don't even know what's best for my own self. And so, of course, my mind wandered, but I did felt and believe that everything was going to be under control. 
Needless to say, of course, the doctor, um, he explained what a mastectomy was, what it looked like. And he told me about possibly doing the lymphectomy. Um, and he was telling me what it was for and what that was going to be like. And of course, a mastectomy is where they take out all that tissue in that area and um, uh, they sent it off because they did not know the stage of my cancer um, at the time. And But it would be determined when they take it all out and send it off. Um, and he um, also take out a couple lymph nodes to make sure that they were cancer free as well, to make sure that I would be, I would not be at risk of getting cancer there again. So just making sure that they're doing all the preventative measures. So um, I didn't know what a mastectomy looked like. So I went online to see what it looked like. And, you know, that kind of scared me because um, you see some people's process, you see some people's scars look good, you know, of course, with, um, you know, most women, they can go in and get implants, but you don't see a lot about men um, going and get reconstructive surgery. You don't see a lot about men in breast cancer kind of at all, honestly and truly. And so I, um, you know, it just left my, my mind jarred and, and wondering and, you know, what is that going to look like for me? Because of course I'm so accustomed to having two nipples and um, what does that look like moving forward? Um, needless to say, uh, fast forwarding, they finally gave me a surgery date, which was on February the 29th. Um, I had my surgery done at Prisma. Of course, you get up in the morning and I had to um, put on a numbing cream around my, my uh, areola. And then I had to wrap myself in saran wrap to so that the cream won't transfer off onto my clothes. Um, I had to get up about five o'clock that morning to do that because they needed to, to set in for a while. And I had to use a whole tube. Um, finally got to um, the office. And, um, of course the wait time, it wasn't that long. It probably was like 40 minutes probably, but, um, you, it just gave me some time to just continue to talk to my friends, um, which helped me feel even the more comfortable, uh, talk to my partner, which made me feel even the more comfortable. And so they end up calling me back. They take you down. Of course, they prepping you for surgery. So you're getting IVs and they're giving you injections. Um, they gave me some kind of injection over on my right side. That would actually help the muscles stay numb for a couple of days. And then they um, gave me um, like a teddy bear um, so that when I go home, I could sit it in my lap and put the seatbelt over it so it wouldn't be pressing in on the incision. And um, they finally took me on back to surgery, um, pulled me over on the table, and um, they put the anesthesia in me and I... Um, I was knocked out when I woke up. They asked me, did I want to stay at the hospital? And I told them, is that an option? And um, they was like, you can go home if you like. And I went home the same day. Um, going home, I was very groggy. So I remember bits and pieces of going home, uh, but not too much because as I said, as I've told people before, the anesthesia really have you kind of, you know, real weird. Um, it stayed in my system for about two days as far as the groggy feeling. Um, but however, um, like by day three, guys, I was good. I, I wasn't in pain, you know, just sore and just making sure that I was careful because they told me to take it easy. But overall, I felt wonderful. Um, as I said before, the soreness was tolerable. And um, I was back up and running, you know, honestly and truly, you know, just doing little things around the house, not too strenuous, but just moving so that I won't just be sitting around eating and gaining weight as if I could stand another pound. But however, um, I am five weeks out from my surgery and I still feel good. Just some tenderness. Uh, the wound healed up beautifully. And um, I went to go see my oncologist, um, I think about two weeks ago. And so right now we are talking about treatment. And so I'm not sure if I will possibly have to do the infused chemotherapy or if I would do uh, the chemotherapy pills. Um, they said that the test that they're sending off to California will determine uh, which one I will do. I'm kind of hoping I don't have to do anything, but um, if so, possibly the pills um, is what I would probably prefer to do. Um, he said that, they, that the side effect from that would be um, hot flashes. Um, I went online and I looked up some other stuff and I've 
heard that there are, well, I read that there are other side effects to the medication. You know, fingers crossed, I won't have to deal with the side effects if that's the route that I will have to go. But however, you know, I do want to be able to discuss and talk to my healthcare professionals about my concerns as far as side effects and what would be the option if I, um, I do try the tamoxifen and it doesn't work out for me. So what's my next option? So currently I'm, I'm awaiting my appointment to go back to the oncologist and um, to see what the next step is. Okay. So that's pretty much it for now. Um, as I said before, I am happy. I'm ecstatic. I am so blessed and I'm so thankful to God. First of all, that I went and got myself checked. And that's another thing. Men, make sure that you go to the doctor and get yourself checked. Um, if it's nothing, confirm that it is nothing. Okay. So with that being said, I hope this information was helpful. You take care and I will see you guys around. Bye.